Hello learners of all ages, my name is Mr. Montgomery, I teach 4th and 5th grade math, and today we're going to be learning how to find sums and differences. Now, as a review, sums are an answer to an addition problem, differences are an uh, answer to a subtraction problem. But first things first, before you add or subtract, double check to make sure what symbol that you are using, or what the directions are asking you to do. If you need any help with problem solving or word problems that have different vocabulary that is based on adding or subtracting, feel free to use the Easter wall, Eastern wall or the red bulletin board on that far side of the classroom to help you out with those words. But whenever we add or subtract something, first things first is we have to line it up place value by place value. My ones place has to be all in line, tens, hundreds, and thousands, and so on and so forth. Sometimes there are gonna be numbers that kind of look like that. And it's gonna have one place value missing, but as long as we have it lined up with the ones place on over to the left, we should be good. Second thing, you're gonna be making sure that we understand are we adding or subtracting? Big, big difference. And third, we always start with the ones place whenever we add or subtract. So we're gonna start with adding today. So with adding, we're gonna be taking a look here. And in my mind, I just start pairing up numbers that work well together. Kind of using the, oh, commutative property where I can flip numbers around and it still will give me the same answer. Well, I can start pairing numbers such as, oh, I don't know, five and four. Well, five and four make nine. I already have another nine. So nine plus nine is 18, 19, 20, 21. And I'm gonna put the one down here and I can't put 21 in one digits place. I'm gonna have to regroup up to the two that goes into the tens place. So now I have two, one, zero, six, and two. Well, two and two can be paired up together to get four. And six plus four is 10, plus one, that's 11. Put one down here, carry my one here. And now I have one, eight, seven, eight, and six. It's a lot of big numbers. But I notice that I have one and seven, which can also make it another group of eight. And then I'll have eight, eight, and eight. Well, eight times three is 24, plus six, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Oh, 30. So I have a zero here and a three brought all the way up here. I have one, two, three, four ones and three, which would be seven. So my answer should be 7,011. Now with subtraction, it's the exact same way. I start with my ones place and make sure that I have all my numbers in line. Make sure that I check to see if I am subtracting or adding. And subtraction has one extra step. We actually have to start on the left side and make sure, can we subtract each number from the uh, menu end, subtracting the subtra hat. So one minus one, I can do that. 7 minus 6, I can do that. 0 minus 2, oh, can't do that. And 3 minus 9, oh, another one that I can't do without getting a negative number. And we're not quite ready for negative numbers yet. Which means that I'm going to have to regroup or borrow, as some uh, mathematicians say. So I'm going to take the 7, I'm going to cross it out. It's going to change to a 6, and this is going to change to a 10. So it's not a 0 anymore, it's a 10. It's taking one group of 100, and now I have 10 groups of 10. 10 times 10 is 100, has the same value. But I still can't subtract three minus nine, so I'm gonna have to cross that 10 out to make it a nine, and that would change this to a 13. So now I'm gonna start from the left again. One minus one, I can, I can do that. Six minus six, I can do that too. Nine minus two, I can do that. And 13 minus nine, can't do that. So if you struggle with subtraction still, I use a count up method when I was in school. So I would start with nine and see how far it gets to 13, but everyone has their own way of doing it. So 13 minus nine, well, that's nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, that's four. Two to nine, well, that's seven. And six minus six is zero. One minus one is zero. So my answer is 74. Now, something to mind when it comes to subtraction and addition, it just takes time. It takes time to figure out what numbers group well together and how your brain works. Uh, with the last problem that we did before this one, I noticed that there was three groups of eight and I can do three groups of eight in my head, but you might still be working on it. So don't give up, you can do it. Take your time and find what works best for you. Now, before we move on to our practice problems, we have one last thing to do. We need to align these numbers and add them together. So right now they're in horizontal. We want them to be vertical because it's easier to add and easier to subtract. So. Best way that I know how to do it is I look to see what my bigger numbers are, okay? Well, I know that's my bigger number. And so I'm gonna write that one first. I'm gonna go 2,936. 
I'm done with that one. Now I'm gonna move on to 760. And so I see that it's only three digits long. So I'm gonna write backwards and go zero, six, and seven. And that one's done, 500 is pretty easy. It's the same distance as 760, four digits, and 789. Then my next step would be to add them together. So this was just a demonstration on how to align the numbers. Now, fifth graders, taking a look at page 15, you're gonna be seeing that we're gonna be doing practice problems number two and practice problem number five. For number two, and actually for number two, the directions say add or subtract. You are clearly gonna be subtracting on this one. And for number five, the directions say align, then add or subtract. So just doing like the example we just did before, you start with a larger number and work your way, lining up the ones place, tens place, hundreds place, thousands place, and beyond. If you have any questions on how to find sums and differences, please let me know when you come to class tomorrow.